So the, uh, the size of the force is yet to be determined that Canadians will contribute to Latvia. Um, do you have enough troops for a sustained presence in Eastern Europe? Put it, you can deploy a battalion, but can you keep it up for however long NATO needs? No, we have the approximate numbers, and uh, uh, a lot of details need to be worked out. But uh, as we said earlier, we can uh, play a role uh, in our uh, be a responsible partner in, in the world. And this is just another example of that. We did this in uh, Operation Impact uh, for, for Iraq, and now we're doing it here uh, with NATO. Is this considered a threat to Russia? No, uh, this is about deterrence. It is you look at the size of the, uh, uh, the force that we're bringing together, this is about showing shock of NATO solidarity. Uh, interoperability and ensuring that the cohesion of uh, what the United Nations can come, come together. And it sends a very strong message, um, as I stated earlier. Um, but dialogue is also a very key component to do this, and dialogue will always be important, making sure that we uh, de escalate uh, uh, any situation. But this is extremely important to show a strong message of solidarity uh, that he wants. Monsieur Vance, il n'y a pas d'enjeu de provoquer la Russie qui a une escalade encore peut-être avec ce, ce nouveau déploiement de Non, je pense que non. Euh, je suis certain que euh, dans le, le point de vue de, de la Russie, euh, on pourrait dire que c'était une provocation, mais ils, euh, ils savent absolument que ce n'est pas une provocation. Qu'est-ce que c'est alors? Pardon? Qu'est-ce que c'est d'après vous alors? Ce, ce déploiement-là, ça représente quoi? Ça représente... Euh, la solidarité, la cohésion de l'Alliance de l'OTAN. C'est une grande opportunité pour le Canada de démontrer le leadership dans l'Alliance. C'est un très bon jeu pour le Canada. Do you understand though why Russia would be sensitive? This is a former part of the Soviet Union and you're putting the Canadian troops in. We also have that understanding here as well given the Russia's actions in the past. You said you had an approximate number. What is that? The approximate number. I mean, uh, uh, actually, the CDS talk was. Yep. Yeah, so uh, much has been uh, written uh, quite accurately as of late uh, about the, the nature of the battle group. So uh, we're uh, working on a deployment of approximately 450. Uh, that will form the nucleus, uh, consisting of the command and control, uh, the support, uh, some of the uh, intelligence functions. Uh, and providing uh, a rifle company equipped with LAV um, as the nucleus for other nations, uh, which we encourage to contribute uh, to form the partnership, an enduring, sustained partnership uh, for the, the, the long-term presence in Latvia. The all-up uh, battle group, the formation of this battle group, will be uh, not exactly the same across all four of the battle groups. There'll be some asymmetry based on agreements with the host nation and what the, the NATO needs are. Uh, but we anticipate that it'll, it'll build out to approximately a thousand, give or take, uh, overall. And right now we're in the process of working out with uh, military leaders both in NATO uh, and in potential partner countries as to how we'll build out the battle group. And it'll take a, it'll take a bit of time. Uh, on a just commencé, we've just started uh, this process, as you can imagine. How long do you think we'll be there? I beg your pardon? When do you think they'll be there and how long will well, they be there? The Secretary General has been clear this is a, an open-ended commitment. Um, and so, you know, Canada has committed to that. We'll, we'll, we'll take it as it comes. Uh, but it is intended to be enduring. Uh, it is intended uh, for all partner nations once we build uh, that battle group that it, it is an enduring process. And as a framework nation, we'll be responsible for governing the rotations and ensuring that it maintains the combat capability necessary. En français? Oui, en français, là-dessus, ça pourrait être à long terme, non? Yes, ça pourrait être... Uh, uh, C'est non défini. C'est un, un période uh, indéfini, peut-être. Right? Uh, mais Canada, uh, absolument, uh, en fait, uh, on va continuer avec nos partenaires pour le, le long terme.
sur le nombre de soldats, vous avez parlé des Le nombre, c'est euh, environ euh, euh, 450. Et en total, peut-être euh, environ 1 000. Mais ça va être différent, un peu asymmetrique, asymmetric, euh, entre les, les quatre euh, groupes, groupements de bataille. Sorry, but... En français, c'est groupement de bataille. When you're saying the Canadian, you're saying 450 Canadians. Yes. Okay. When you're saying also it could go up to a thousand, but that's that's with the battle group built out. So you can imagine Canada's providing the nucleus, the command and control, the leadership, and some of the enablers, including a rifle company. Other nations will partner with us to fill out that battle group to bring it to about a thousand, potentially more. We've got to work out the details with uh, NATO senior leadership, uh, Latvia and potential partner nations and work out exactly what the best fit is in Latvia with us and for the nations that are contributing. Uh, just, well, just on, the ground, on the ground, what will deterrence look like? Some of your officials have described this as a trick one, but what will deterrence look like and how does it differ from what you're doing already? Well, if you look at the construct, as uh, General Matt was saying, in terms of the leadership role that we have, the numbers that we're going to be providing and the other nations that will, that will be contributing uh, uh, to this shows the solidarity of nations uh, working together, the interoperability of our, of our military. Um, the size itself uh, is, is uh, in any future in terms of it's not significant, but what it shows is that solidarity. It, it demonstrates how nations can, can work together when a problem is before them to give that uh, assurance to nations. But that's that uh, deterrence uh, measure uh, that's being presented here. But I would also want to emphasize that this is also an opportunity now uh, how we're demonstrating a very open man with this type of uh, deterrence is that dialogue will always be open. And I know there's no more dialogue uh, sessions that we'll really set up, but it needs to be uh, responsible so that we can start de escalating uh, some of the, the uh, situ situation that we have been facing. I think if I can just uh, uh, add to that, uh, in this case, uh, as the minister said, it's, it's cohesion. This is the alliance demonstrating uh, its will uh, and staying. Uh, short of being provocative in terms of an offensive capability in the Russian territory. So that's good. What deterrence looks like is it, it raises a threshold of risk. Uh, it, it may be slight, but it's definitely there. Some kind and of so I don't know how terms like tripwire or poison, you, know, you can use those as descriptors. Uh, but what it really does is raise that calculus of risk. Do you take any steps against a NATO nation, given that the alliance has decided to put in what will be very credible, combat forces, not intended to attack, entirely defensive in nature. And at the same time, as the minister described, uh, an ongoing dialogue with Russia uh, makes for uh, a deterrent posture built on mutual respect as opposed to one nation uh, bullying others. Thanks. Thank you.